okay i received this google pixel 4xl from another repairing shop and the phone is not switching on so in this lesson you will learn how to troubleshoot google pixel devices so you will work together and try to revive this phone as you can see the phone was already dismantled everything yeah everything is clear they already worked on the phone okay so if you watch my other videos you will see that i i was working on a phone and i said i received a couple of phones from uh, another phone repairing shop and uh, i will be working on those phones one by one so that you can yeah see the full process so this is one of the phones so if you take a good look right here that's a battery connector and uh, if you check right here you will see that they sold that something there so we disconnect the battery connector and if you check again you will see okay we have the v yeah oh we have the the v bar jumper point you also sold that something okay and if you look at the battery connector beside the battery connector you will see a screwdriver point which seems like they use force to to pull it off so we are going to test the the battery to see the voltage of the battery first set our multimeter to dc then test the battery connector so let's see yeah, the, the, the battery is pretty low, that's 9 volt. Yeah, no problem with that. Let's set our multimeter to, yeah, to diode mode, which is Buza mode, right? Diode mode and Buza mode integrated. So, yeah, we, we, we use our red probe. We will perform a cold testing, red probe to the GNV. And uh, we use the black probe and place it in the VBAT. So this is the best method. You see that reading three, uh, yeah, three four six. It's in three four six. So that stuff. That's a good reading. It shows that there is no short in the mobile PCB. Not generally. There is no short in the primary section. There is no short in the primary section of the the, the phone's input voltage, which is the phone VBAT line. So we, if we test, you see that we test the, the, the battery ID, we test, we also test the, 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 the BTEM, which is a battery temperature signal line, and the reading is okay. So we connect our phone to our DC power supply, we have to put it up, the, the battery is low, right? So we cannot be working while using the, the battery, which is pretty low. And for us to be able to identify where we need to start troubleshoots in the mobile PCB, we have to use our DC power supply. So I'm checking to see if I have any connector that will go to the Google Pixel. And it seems like there is no connector, right? So we will have to use our yeah, jumper cables right here to send the V bad voltage into the phone. I have two cables right here. So I just have to solder solder one to the to the V bad. So uh, let me zoom in a, a bit. Okay that that's okay. So I will have to solder one to the V bad right there just like that yeah keep following yeah like like the video subscribe in case you are new to my channel yeah this video is a very detailed lesson so make sure not to skip any part and if you want my professional level call make sure to send me a message on whatsapp so we set our current check at, uh, at my this power supply set our current to 2.5 yeah that's just for testing first yeah, 2.5 and there uh, we connect yeah well that's <laughs> that's uh, I wasn't expecting that there is a short in a mobile PC if it's check right there you will see that the yeah there is a, actually a short take a look again I'm going to connect it again you see what, what what's happening right there so let me try pressing the, the power key and yes there is a shot a secondary shot the shot is acting really weak but we are going to see so that okay so let's connect the, the phone to our charger then yeah to see if you will see any if the phone has any life any life running in the pcb so you see there is no current consumption right there which means that the phone is totally dead 
yeah right it's totally dead so they, you have to go deep into the mobile pcb right here and the troubleshoot so let's open everything up do this first okay so again make sure you like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos i create tutorial videos on how to repair and if you want to learn everything in great detail like learn for example you see how i just connect everything in my dc power supply and i'm like okay i actually know this problem blah 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 you know how to read the DC power supply that will be okay if you get my professional level course so this is the pcb and uh, we'll be working on the pcb right here remember i said there is a shot and one thing you need to understand here is that our uh, multimeter did not detect a shot right so which means that the shot here is a, a secondary shot which will be in the vph you understand so in this side of the mobile pcb you have the charging ic there here we have the cpu and the hard disk mm -hmm. yeah the hard disk right there so which means that we will be focusing on the charging section we will have to check the vph which is the secondary line yeah i have this cutter right here it's very good the reason why i'm using the cutter to remove the shield is because we have the hard disk the, the, the cpu just beside where we will be working on and we will try to uh, to yeah not to use heat because at times using heat you might end up not uh, uh, fixing the device not because you could not find the problem because just the heat caused the some open circuits short circuits on that uh, the bigger ic is all that stuff so i try to, to cut it but it seems like it's easy to, to to go off so i just yeah pull it pull it off that's great yeah really great so that's the charging ic yeah that's the charging ic and we have the the, the coil yeah, that the call the, the vph coiled so if you check the bonus schematic diagram i use bonus schematic and aesthetic schematic to to be able to know exactly where the, the, the vph line is coming out from because i know that, that the vph is actually the line with the problem so we will have to set our multimeter to to booza mode again to check for shortage in the secondary section like i said the vph should be the problem and uh, just set and go straight to the VBAT that's the VBAT input of the charging IC and that's the VPH that's a short that's a short in the VPH capacitor that's the VBAT no short the VPH next to it all the capacitors connected in the parallel in the VPH line they're shorting okay we will have to work on that because we have seen the shorting capacitor doesn't mean that yeah we yeah we, are, we will be solving the problem just now okay so you have to be sold at this remember a lot of capacitors were shot in there so we have to use our our jumper cable you have to jump out the cable right there then use our smoke or dust powder you can call it rosin flux uh, yeah have to use it then connect connect it right there and uh, yeah you see it cannot heat up if you check the dc power supply you will see that there is no stable the, the voltage and both the, the voltage the current is not stable which means that it cannot heat up any ic so until we set the, the current and the voltage in the way that it can heat up you won't be able to see any yeah any reading i try adjusting so it keeps on going off which means that we still have to, to adjust so depending on the section that you are working on i connected 4.2 volt to the vph you need to know the section in which you are working on to be able to know the voltage the 4.2 volt is not bad so i reduce it to 1.8 volt which is a safe voltage and increase the the, the, the current completely and now it's a stable 4.2 to 4.1 consumption i test right here um, and uh, there is heat in this section there is heat in this particular section which means that you can see the other capacitors in the other side doesn't heat up yeah so let's open this using our safe method again cutting this so this one is pretty hard so i have to cut it all round 
rather than just pulling it like i did in the other one but at times when it start cutting it you will see that it's easy to remove and you can easily remove it but i just cut this one right here and i will let her remove it because it might uh, be, be hard to get into the case but for now let's focus here so this phone ha have two power ic's and this is one of them from the schematic you can use uh, stick or bono like i, I did to know where the, the power ic is and uh, how many power ic is so i sold up this cable i have to sold up this cable right here then yeah spray our powder here again smoke or whatever you can call it just spray that then yeah we will have to to check the heating component in this section because the section was heating up so we are under our microscope right here and uh, yeah everything is clear we we'll have to connect it to our DC power supply to see what what happens here. So we are connecting, and boom, you see that, right? So that's heating up. That capacitor is the one heating up from this section, and the capacitor is bad. So yeah, let's just hope that we solve the the problem. That's very clean. Well. Let's just hope that we solve the problem by removing this. But because you have seen the heating capacitor, it doesn't mean that okay, you will succeed. Nope, that's that's not how it works. So that's the capacitor. We just pull it off. Yeah, you, you can still not replace it. It will work fine. But I recommend you replace. But I won't replace. <laughs> yeah. So let's make sure everything is clean. Set our multimeter to buzzer mode again to make sure that the the points of the capacitor that we just removed is okay ah uh, yeah so we have to perform a cold testing test the point well i wasn't expecting it to read <laughs> that's still reading there is still a shot in the mobile pcb we still have a lot of work here then man that that's a lot so we still have to work on the pcb this is crazy it's crazy so let's test the other side yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah the vph is still shorting the, the shot is still there the shot is still there so we 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 still have a lot of work here to do still have a lot of work so i'm suspecting the capacitors in the in the section to be sincere right here i'm suspecting the capacitors around the, the power the charging ic yeah the, the ones that we, we were first working on so uh, we will have to go under the microscope again uh, what i did here don't know yeah th that's not a problem uh, that's not a problem you just have to spray the, the powder again and focus the heat on this section there is a possibility that yeah we will have the chance to heat up since we have removed the other bad capacitor so inject it then boom we see that that's another bad capacitor directly which is even the first component yeah the second component in the vph line so clean everything make sure everything is very clean and pull this one again yeah pull it off that 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 guy is bad and we have to clean this solder here clean it and uh, yeah inject it and everything is clean right so make sure that everything is clean and uh, and we see how things be right here okay so right here you can see that this is the vph line which is the secondary voltage that is why you are not able to detect the shot and this is me right here yeah, working late at night. <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually doing a voiceover right here. I like to do certain things late at night, so I don't usually record while I'm fi filming. That's why most of the time my voice is sounding a tight because I always record late at night. So right here, let's test the PCB. Let's test the the, the PCB again. Let's test the, the VPH line. To see if the capacitor was the one causing the shot and uh, yeah i test have to connect our uh, red probe performing a cold testing to the gnd and we use our black probe 
test the side of the VPH and that reading is okay that reading is okay there is no shot in that point again yeah the, the, we remove the shot and let's let's test the other side in which we first remove the capacitor which was still short in let's and there is no shot let's hope everything work, works right here but keep in mind <laughs> Yeah, and in most cases you won't succeed even by removing the shot which is why you have to continue watching the video to see what happens next so what we'll have to do we'll have to connect it to our DC power supply now that we have removed the secondary shot which seems to be the problem of the phone and we will have to inject the the phone to our DC power supply this power supply to the phone something how you want to take it then breach the, the the power key and see okay that's a good reading let's wait a bit and see that's a good reading but oh <laughs> not a good reading but the phone actually tried to switch on it surpassed the import mode was uh, around the the boot boot mode they yeah, are from the DC power supply so it's stuck there and I think the reason why it's stuck there is because there is no battery ID signal for the phone to boot up exactly so we just quickly put everything together then try to on the phone using the battery itself because you will have the, the battery ID yeah let's try switching it on and you can see like I said it, it's not identifying the DC power supply as the battery because of the battery ID right which means that we will have to we'll have to put the test with the battery the battery will have the ID the B temp and every signal that the phone needs so let's connect the battery I activated the battery I boost the battery and uh, let's see and no power it doesn't mean we haven't succeeded <laughs> okay so from here i think the, the the problem is the battery because i boosted the battery i tested from yeah from the before the circuit of the battery like right here i tested from the pins before getting into the circuit and i have uh, uh 4.5 volt there and uh, i tested the 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 the, the flex the the connector that connects to the pcb and th there is only two volt which means that the circuit has a problem so you see right here we have the positive of the battery we are working on the circuit right here the the, the negative sorry the negative and we have the fuse resistor of the negative battery line and we have the f the fuse resistor of the positive battery line so instead of just uh, telling the the the, the, the what a technician or the customer that they should change the battery instead we know that we can actually do this fix this so i i noticed that the the the, the positive line has a short in voltage like the voltage is not completed it's not getting into the 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 four volt from that resistor is not getting into this fuse resistor to go to the battery connector itself so i quickly do this you use my uh, uv light to cure the, the, yeah everything and quickly i worked on the battery and i got the voltage i put in everything right there and let's see if we succeeded in working on this guy google pixel they are really crazy and boom everything be good right here and because you have seen the the, the awning logo doesn't mean everything is okay so you'll have to wait to see if the phone can actually boot up okay so now that the phone is on yeah it's great right it's great but it doesn't mean that yeah you have succeeded we did a jumper in the battery we have to check if the phone is charging and it's charging which means that our jumper was okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> everything be good right here make sure you like the video subscribe to my youtube channel and send me a message if you want to learn mobile repairing starting from the basics of troubleshooting to the professional level of troubleshooting and fixing every mobile phone fault